Alrighty, hello, every folks, and good morning. Welcome to part, um, honestly, I don't even remember, of the uh, no movement challenge here. Um, so, you might be wondering, wait a minute, uh, this is where it left off last time, sure, but why is everybody dead? Um, so, here's the thing. Um, I was theorizing last time uh, that there was a possibility that the AI would get a bit more aggressive depending on your own personal team state. Now, as an interesting thing, um, it turns out that there is actually a way to, uh, to kind of abuse the AI, uh, because you might notice he's suddenly getting close. Notice what else is different about this particular scene. That's right, we murdered all of our own team members in cold blood, so <laughs> effectively it turns out uh, that if, just like the uh, just like the theory was stating there, uh, if you end up uh, causing a bunch of casualties to your side, like, I don't think this is a straight numbers thing because it didn't apply in any of the solo runs, but um, if you just cause a bunch of casualties to your side, the AI does, in fact, just kind of forego everything and get more aggressive. The funny part about this um, is that uh, they actually uh, will, for example, it, it seems to override uh, their, their need to be safe here, so to speak. Um, so what we're seeing right now is that Dagon decided to uh, kind of unlock himself from the other side of the map and come over to attack us. Now... Would the more practical option have been to, uh, you know, go just do the same thing with not letting Fulker die and then he would get the kill instead? Sure, but this is way more unhinged and amusing, so this is what we're going to go with. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so yeah, the, uh, the general idea here is that uh, once we had enough casualties on our side, uh, once we ended up killing off about more than half the team... Uh, Dagon looked at the numbers and was like, holy crap, I don't know what I just did, I'm an AI, I'm too stupid to understand, but half that team just died, so it's go time, baby, <laughs> and he just went for it. Um, so, it turned out great for him, as you can tell, um, this is what happens with misplaced confidence. Anyway, um... I got, uh, got some skill ranks for Lex, and, uh, everybody else was just kind of sitting around. Now, if you're wondering uh, whether this uh, whether this means that we're replacing the entire team with zombies, no. Uh, so the thing was, this didn't work from just knocking them down. That did nothing. That was the initial failure that happened last time. Right, knocked out most of the team, and it got us absolutely nowhere. But as soon as they started dying, stuff was different. Now, this could mean a few different things. Uh, you know, maybe it's just a matter of, like, they'll gladly take a 5v1, but, you know, an 8v1's asking too much. Um, it could just be that uh, it, that it's the uh, the number of casualties that just directly kind of putting its finger on the scale, because it didn't seem to be units downed. Though I have seen some AIs getting aggressive from units getting downed in particular, that's why I was trying it in the first place. So, I'm assuming that there's a bit more to it. Um, I, from what I understand, uh, like, Gibd and Rakes were looking into the, uh, like, how the AI works for these games, and it sounds like it's basically like the ramblings of a madman nobody <laughs> like, as i understand it there was very little actually useful information gotten out of that um i will follow up if i know more <laughs> but last i heard it was basically a, to the tune of so what did you find out uh it, it was just crazy in there <laughs> Um, but again, I'm, I'm hoping that was just out of context. I forgot to uh, to go double check and ask again. Anyway, so with everybody dead, uh, we get to the Syria scene, and suddenly she's not pissed at anybody and just directly asks us for help as mercenaries, which is kind of neat, I guess. Um, they don't love war, yet they're about to go war real hard, absolutely, everywhere, all over everyone's face. Now... What I decided to do at this point was uh, a few things. See, there was one skill in particular that I was expecting uh, to get us past our seemingly unbreakable barrier uh, in this chapter. Uh, so before we can actually get into Chapter 3 proper, um, there are a few fights that are going to be fairly difficult. Now, conveniently, uh, when we're getting to Elmorica, that's not going to be much of a problem, because frankly, the best way to handle that fight is to just basically sit where you are. Um, when it comes to the castle itself, again, not really too much of an issue, but when it comes to uh, to the fight right before that, that was one of those things that was expected to softlock this run. See, once you get into... Uh, uh, <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me, throat's being weird. Uh, once you get into the uh, Archaeopolis of Rhyme, uh, you are expected uh, to directly go fight uh, Zapan uh, with a one-on-one -on -one versus uh, of uh, Denim versus Zapan, um, where uh, while he is surrounded by the whole rest of the party. So obviously he's not going to be soloing that situation without moving. 
Um, and, uh, basically, our goal is to get uh, get him unhitched from his location, so I have, we have to get uh, Zapan to uh, to forget his safety, for one thing. Uh, we have to manage to not let Denim die out during that time, and so I figured, you know what, there's one perfect answer to this, but I don't actually know what level it unlocks at. That's actually why, why I was doing that training fight earlier. Um, because uh, one thing that would be perfect for this situation, that we'll be reusing later down the line, um, is actually going to be Evanescence. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, it's not available yet. Uh, I think it's available in like at like 25 or so, uh, not at 17. So we don't have it just yet, but it will be a very useful tool. It's, again, how I was theorizing this run would even be remotely possible. Uh, because for those that have never tried it or didn't see the video on it, uh, Evanescence is a sort of special uh, special type of down state. Um, that it does self-destruct you, but it doesn't actually leave you incapacitated like it says. Um, what it does is it's, it's basically playing dead, uh, is for all intents and purposes. Uh, that it causes you uh, to, uh, to lay on the ground and then come back after the three-turn countdown. Uh, you're basically in an undead state that cannot be exercised uh, when you're downed. Um, so you will be on your way back, you will get the blue counter, but you won't be able to actually, uh, you won't be able to re-raise with undead or anything like that. Um, which, funnily enough, I actually found out recently with that, uh, with that particular mechanic coming back for one vision, uh, they actually did specifically allow it there, which is pretty interesting, uh, that, uh, in the one vision version, uh, if you have, like, 100 TP on a Necromancer, uh, you can basically do, uh, Entomb plus, uh, uh, plus Animate Dead, uh, to give somebody a full restore, more or less. It's extremely expensive, but it is, uh, one of the few ways of giving somebody a complete instant restore. Anyway, um, back to it, though. So, uh, so as far as Denim goes here, um, I figured even though we didn't have access to Evanescence yet, the ninja would probably be the best answer here. See, uh, I forgot to go pick up some dodge items before this fight, but uh, the initial thought process was, you know what, he's got Steel Stance, uh, he's been training as a knight his whole life, basically, so his vitality is higher than these units are ready for right now. Uh, so, as you can see, they're basically just doing chip damage to him. He can heal himself, and if his Steel Stance rolls, it's honestly just about as good as Phalanx in this particular situation. But he also has the Smoke Bomb Cloud uh, that uh, they can potentially give him free dodges as well. So, in theory, he could infinitely survive in this situation, give or take. Uh, he would just have to keep using those items, but there were a few wrinkles in that plan. Um, and additionally, also, there was that whole thing of uh, it's actually technically possible to take a pretty meaty number off of Zapan if the numbers are all right. Um, but with all that said, a few things that, uh, that uh, came up as an issue. For one thing, ninjas are fast. Uh, so this does let him heal faster, but once he's downed, this gives us a lot less time to actually work with uh, to uh, uh, to go take care of Zapan. Because one way or another, he will eventually fall down to the ground. Um, once he does, Zapan immediately becomes aggressive towards the rest of the party. Once he doesn't, he'll kind of he'll kind of just kind of hinge back and forth, kind of thinking about it. So presumably, if there's enough casualties, he'll gladly go after the rest of the party. Um, but he wasn't going at it too consistently. Um, the only way to actually get a card picked up on Denim is if uh, somebody crits him into one, which is so freakishly unlikely it's just not going to happen. So we won't be able to get consistent Steel Stance or Phalanx going. It's going to be roughly in the 30% ballpark to actually roll. Um, and then the next issue is the fact that, obviously, Zapan is pretty meaty uh, in and of himself, so there's not necessarily a... Uh, uh, there, we don't exactly have a whole lot of time to finish him off, but this gets us to yet another further wrinkle, uh, which is the fact that every Beast Tamer here has Lobber and has healing items, uh, because it's, you know, it's a trap. Everything, everything about this fight is a trap. So if you go after Zapan, uh, he will almost always be able to heal up entirely. Uh, in order to actually be able to uh, out-damage his healing, uh, you would need to be uh, right up close to him, using a pretty beefy class, using something like a Tyrant Mace, uh, to uh, repeatedly exploit that uh, elemental weakness. Um, that would give you a pretty solid advantage, put a breach on that, and you're probably looking pretty threatening, but basic finishers, you know, like neutral finishers like Dark Weight, still will take a solid chunk off of him. It's just, you know, he has to actually be close for that stuff to land. And this first time around, uh, he started getting close uh, after a little while, um, but unfortunately, we just didn't have uh, everything lined up just right to make it happen. Um, I, I actually got a little bit distracted and ended up wasting my um, 
uh, my uh, uh, Dynast King's Mead that I had on uh, Lex over there, uh, I ended up using it on a dragon instead. I was hoping it would make them more aggressive, thinking, you know what, last time we figured out that deaths were a thing, or, well, you know, death aggression was more of a thing, so maybe we could get him to come out a bit faster if we kill off his units faster. We know that's a mechanic, we just don't know to what degree. So, either way, that plan was a total bust, because uh, we didn't have the numbers to take down that dragon anyway. Uh, maybe if I'd uh, uh, had a Dragoon uh, that I'd brought along, but not in this particular situation. So, either way, it wasn't happening. Uh, they're just simply... Uh, it, we didn't quite get the angles uh, for that to happen. Where? See, where... Uh, <laughs> what, what is it? What's gone wrong? That, that's exactly the problem, Tenem. There was no going. <laughs> Anyway, I noticed that uh, Lasagna didn't actually have any buff items on him, which was pretty useful. Um, also uh, noticed that uh, I wasn't using my uh, my TK as much as I should have, because that fear would be pretty darn useful. Um, so I just went and reloaded everybody's stuff uh, to see what kind of uh, things we might need here. Yes, we are down to literally the last ten people that we have in the team for the moment, but we'll recruit more later. Anyway, so... Uh, a few plans came to mind. For one thing, the first time around, I didn't uh, put the octopus close to the water. Obviously, having access to that poison rain would give him pretty big coverage in this area. Uh, plus, uh, DOTs against this many units would be really, really good. Um, one thing that I haven't noticed up to this point is that uh, Lasagna's mind is really low. Like, he just rolled really crappy for that stat, apparently. So, his, his odds of actually landing those poisons are pretty low. Um... That's an interesting thing. That's, uh, when it comes to monster abilities, it's one of the few cases where it literally still just uses the original um, uh, original odds to hit, like a tin PSP, but it doesn't benefit from things like Spell Strike, so it can't be uh, guaranteed. But if you bump up their mind by just a few points, it can be significant. Um, anyway, uh, a few other quirks that got realized over the course of the next few attempts here. So for one thing, uh, that uh, Steel Stance plus uh, Smoke Bomb combo Really solid, but again, the speed is just not going to make the ninja work here. It's so close, um, and if I'd had Evanescence, it would be 100% perfect. Um, but unfortunately, it's like it's one of these cases where it's just it, he just does not last long enough as soon as he's on the ground. Second thing I should mention, uh, if you're wondering why I keep shooting these barrels, despite the fact that I can't get access to those particular uh, cards or whatever, I'm trying to uh, max out the uh, card limit in places that they hopefully won't reach. Um, so... Either way, it just uh, means that uh, we don't we don't necessarily have them coming in with as many cards, that they're just going to be spawning over here, and we get a better idea for kind of what's coming in, you know? Um, okay, so with all that being said, there was actually some other point that I completely forgot about, but uh, whatever, we'll get there when we get there. So... Um, as it stands, th here's the uh, the other wrinkle. Uh, that's, uh, that, uh, that Beast Tamer up there has a Stun Dart Blowgun, which means at any point he can just roll for a chance to stun, which means that the only means of healing that either the Knight or Ninja have in this particular situation is completely taken away 50% of the time. So it's, yeah, it, it's not exactly going to be too much of a help here. Uh, quick coffee break, one sec. Not sure why I paused so much for that one. Apparently she was very dramatically looking at that X in her hand and wondering when she gets a chance to use it. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, Terror Knights with Drain Heart, I feel, are probably going to be one of our bread and butter things going forward. Um, like, I'm, I'm thinking we probably replace a whole lot of units with uh, with Terror Knights, uh, Shield, Crossbow, you know, Drain Heart, that kind of thing. Uh, just because of how useful that is. Like, good defense, good recovery, uh, you know, decent range and whatnot. Um, but, either way, we'll, we'll deal with that when it comes. So, uh, they end up getting a lot of units close this time. As you may notice, we shield-bashed our people around, and they actually got staggered out a decent bit, which tended to make more units come our way. So this was kind of the, the next step of the plan here. Um, where I started realizing, you know what, maybe it's uh, it's not so important to play defensive, uh, but if we scatter everything up, we open up our lines, they start jumping in off the cliffs, which is pretty handy for us. I still can't get that octopus where I want him to go just yet, but we'll get there eventually. Um, <clears throat> uh, the problem is, I didn't bring a second uh, Tremendous Shot. Uh, I, I should have gone short bow and Tremendous Shot on my Archer, um, but uh, I was waiting for the, uh, the Boulder Bow unlock, and it's just past this point. So, either way... 
Uh, wasn't quite happening there, but uh, that's still just fine. Unfortunately, at this point, uh, Denim is looking pretty low on his timer. We're getting some good numbers off. Uh, Zapan is starting to get close, but again, there's just simply not enough time as of yet. Um, like we we barely have a few seconds to actually uh, take out Zapan once he gets close, and uh, we basically want some kind of advantage in that situation. Um, but the faster the weak off his units, the faster he will approach. And additionally, just like uh, the Vice fight, uh, one of the big important things that needs to happen is for uh, uh, for uh, Zapan to get slowed down. So as you see, we managed to get him to the cliff. He was about to go jump down. And, like, originally I was thinking the only way that we're going to get him to do anything is if he walks down those stairs, so I was going out of my way to not block those stairs. Um, but yeah, no, he'll hop down the cliff uh, along with everybody else. So, uh, once again, due to our lack of going, he ends up dead. Rippin probably should have moved those feet, soldier. Anyway, uh, so, uh, next up is actually going to be the winning attempt here. So, with lots of lessons learned, we're going to try to throw the octopus into the water, we're going to try to get our uh, negotiators a bit close, we're going to try to stick a beast tamer in some place that some dragons might show up. It's not a perfect plan, but it's a plan, um, except for the fact that we don't have a beast tamer. Um, and, uh, yeah, we end up switching Denim over to the, uh, to the knight here, which ends up giving us Rampart Aura, as well as a couple of heals, as well as Phalanx and all that. So, the Rampart Aura doesn't seem, or not, sorry, Rampart Shadow doesn't seem like it would be that important, because, well, it's the Rampart Shadow. It basically never had the use. I mean, it does, but it realistically doesn't. It's, it's practically challenge run only tier of an ability, but... Um, in this particular instance, it's uh, it's actually pretty darn useful. Like, normally, I would say save the Rampart Shadow skills strictly for the Golem, because they're really, really good at using them, uh, whereas the Knight kind of gets the, uh, the weaker version of it, and generally is just, uh, like, usually they're better off just going uh, something like a Guardian Forest or just extra health or whatnot. But, um, in this case, it actually ended up being one of the reasons that uh, this was successful. Um, so, while it is, on paper, a way to block off uh, entire locations, to essentially prevent units from going to a place, maybe trapping them into an inopportune location or something, um, what it actually does that's really handy in this case is effectively the same thing as that, uh, that kind of uh, shadow ring from Dark Souls 2. Um, I forget, uh, was it like, was it Gower's ring, I think, maybe? Uh, but the one that basically attaches a ghost to your back. Um, that's more or less what's going on here. Um, that uh, it's uh, going to be uh, blocking one of the four tiles that can attack us, which means that there's only going to be three places that they can attack from. Additionally, if Zapan is in one of those places, one of the cool things that happens um, is that if his Berserk triggers, he just straight up won't attack. Um, because if his own soldiers are in the way and he's going to do more to them, which he definitely will, uh, due to how defensive uh, Denim is, um, that basically means that he just won't take that swing. So he's just there awkwardly waiting to, uh, to take an attack. Uh, so if we get Berserk, that ends up working out perfectly here. Um, anyway, so we start getting immediately battered down despite this. Um, and there were a, f a few things that, uh, that were coming to mind here. So for one thing, uh, it seemed like Cash was, was actually going to make it here. Uh, because uh, one of the earlier versions of this particular plan was that, you know, we actually probably could survive a decent bit longer as the ninja there, get past that whole stun problem and everything else if she just survives. So I was planning to go, you know, pop into training mode, go pick up a whole bunch of, um, a uh, bunch of XP charms or something, maybe uh, give her a bit more defensive equipment. Um, and then, then stuff happened, uh, because then, you know, this was attempted here. Um, anyway, so yeah, she gets taken out, as she does. Like, thing is, no matter what, uh, you can't change her class. Like, if I could change her into, like, a knight, terror knight, something like that, um, probably a knight, ideally. Uh, that would that would give us a lot more freedom for actually keeping her alive. Um, unfortunately, as it is, she's stuck to very basic pieces of equipment as far as armor goes. Uh, we can only... If she gets close, we can give her a defensive buff, but she's not going to uh, use it herself. Also, funny limitation of the Rampart Shadow is that if there's a card in the way, it just basically denies you from, uh, from putting anything there, which is awesome. Um, anyway... So, as you saw right there, he'll go ahead and use his finisher, but he won't be willing uh, to actually take that Berserk swing. Anyway, 
uh, pincers are still going to get past us just fine. Like, one of the downsides of this whole situation is the fact that we are still surrounded. Um, there's very little that we can do about that particular situation outside of that Rampart Shadow. And I literally only had the opportunity to put down one of them, but it was basically what ended up making this winnable. So his defense isn't too much different as the knight, um, unless his phalanx rolls, which I believe is... I want to say 25%. Uh, either way, uh, it's it, as far as I'm as far as I'm recalling, it's uh, lower than steel stance. But uh, honestly, it doesn't make too much of a difference. Uh, that uh, percentage reduction, as well as uh, uh, the uh, armor being raised from steel stance, are pretty comparable in this particular situation. But with Zapan out of the way and three units with relatively weak attacks uh, in front of us here, uh, this means we can protect our back from pincers and uh, we can end up getting attacked uh, over and over with a bunch of daggers and such. Uh, kind of pulling the uh, kind of reverse Caesar, as it were. <laughs> um, where we're getting the stabbing, we're just not getting the post for it. Anyway, so I started staggering my units once again to try to invite all of those units to jump off of cliffs and join the party. As they do, uh, we end up getting several Raven Eyes, unfortunately, from this uh, golem over here, and that actually might be uh, might be useful down the line. Uh, and additionally, uh, our Octopus ends up getting knocked into a physical up and an MP up, uh, so that's basically perfect for us here. Unfortunately, he doesn't get knocked into the water. If he got knocked into the water, he probably could go and kill off this team by himself, but he doesn't get knocked into the water, and his, uh, uh, his Aqua Veil is something like 10% chance to actually happen, so... You know, we're... <laughs> I don't think it's actually 10%. I think it's also, like, 20 to 30-ish, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, I have the skill list up here somewhere. It's just on the low end. I, like, m mentally, I always have it not as the number, but just like, oh, it's approximately on the never-gonna-happen range, sometimes-gonna-happen range, or happens-all-the-time range. Um, anyway. Uh, so I start rolling for some uh, some sleeps on our Terranite to see if we can get some people out of the way so that they stop spamming us. Uh, those Raven's Eyes uh, hurt quite a bit. Um, unfortunately, due to that resist, uh, or due to that evade coming up there, uh, we did end up losing that one. Though, an interesting note here, um, as far as this map is concerned, uh, so this is one of your opportunities to get uh, access to Hoplites pretty early. Uh, so, it's funny because around this time is when a map in uh, the original PSP version uh, would have opened up that allowed you to get access to advanced lizard classes. They specifically mention on this map that you should try to use recruit skills, um, which is, again, just kind of funny because it's like, oh, why are you mentioning this? This is pretty random. This is an ambush. Why are we trying to talk them down? And it's because of those advanced lizard classes here. They always drop hints, you know? It's nice. Anyway, so... Uh, due to that fear, the short bow absolutely shreds that golem. Uh, and as you can see, Denim is still up. We've gotten several KOs at this point. Uh, we're very handily dealing with their units. Uh, they're getting a good bit more aggressive. We're clearing out the field, and Denim is still standing. After all this time, like a true survivor, feeling like a little kid. Anyway, that was dumb. Moving on. Um, so... Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, daughter was uh, getting into uh, uh, Just Dance recently, and like, she just gets on the kicks of playing that and just kept playing that song over and over, and honestly, I can't blame her. Okay, so, uh, with that dragon wasting a dash, as he does, uh, we end up finally getting our turn once again, and once again end up lasting a decent bit longer here. You can tell that Zapan's actually dropped his uh, kind of aggression at this point. So we've actually managed to go through all of our uh, mending salves. I'm down to heal twos, but, you know, it's still potentially pretty decent. I mean, I'm getting a lot less healing, but in theory, this should be awesome. So I already have my Rampart Shadow up. I can't really put down another one. Um, and unfortunately, we're getting shredded by fireballs, but still, like, progress is getting made, so... So that's nice. Uh, it, it, it's always nice to see something like the class actually managing to win fights just on sheer durability alone. I, I don't know. It just always feels very satisfying. It's like, what what do you do? Oh, I just take hits on the chin. Like, oh, that that's not very useful. And then, you know, he's over there just basically hard carrying this entire fight here. Um, I tried going for a recruit on uh, this unit because their name was Anus, and that's funny to me, but unfortunately, uh, yeah, didn't end up succeeding, but we did end up getting the bonus objective, which is nice. Um, that actually ended up being useful for reasons I don't remember off the top of my head right now, but uh, ultimately, I was just really worried that this fight was going to be a permanent softlock, um, but, uh, but yeah. And, and this is just when I was showing that, yeah, you could get a hoplite over there, I think... Maybe there's a Patriarch in here somewhere? I don't know. But there are advanced lizard classes that show up on a lot of the maps where they say to uh, go get yourself a... Uh, go get yourself a friggin' hire, you know? 
Um, so, lucky crit on uh, Canopus. Uh, he actually ended up getting slapped into a crit card, which was a nice little uh, benefit there. Uh, Terror Knight, absolutely just putting in all the work you could possibly expect here. Elemental Advantage versus this Rogue for a big ol' slap on her there. Um, uh, start getting uh, some numbers on Zapan, and you might notice a few of the units around there are going to be carrying MP leaves. Uh, so I, I brought some plus ones along so that we could keep feeding Canopus uh, more bow attacks. Um, or actually, even just basic ones, rather. Uh, that one was meant to go to Canopus, I just misclicked. Um, but either way, like the idea was that we were just uh, spamming as many uh, attacks as was humanly possible onto Zapan at this point. Um, I wasn't missing the opportunity now that we've come this far. Uh, we have a few units with Ice Finishers that are relatively close to where he is, but uh, they're not going to be able to land him. Um, and Denim is still on his three-count timer. We're, we've gotten Zapan down most of the way. Uh, we've gotten most of the healing gone because uh, they've been throwing healing at all those units. We've been grinding down uh, the keep hopping in off the cliffs. So they've got very little left in the tank. Uh, he's trying to send more units ahead of him, but, you know, it's not going terribly well for him. We finally get the the uh, octopus in the water after all this time. So that's all nice, too, except I think they end up knocking him out before I get a chance to use him, which is just, like, like come on, just it, let me have this. <laughs> the dang fish finally had it landed in the water. Let me enjoy the occasion, but no, it decided not to. Anyway, um, okay. So we end up uh, getting more stuff slapped around there. He steals my metal pants, as he does. Yeah, I think it was that stun that did it. I forget. I, I remember not being able to use him, but hey, who knows. Anyway, short bows and such uh, end up happening. Zapan ends up... Uh, see? No, he ran out of range, right? But yeah, so their healing is basically out the window at this point. Um, he's just going to keep on attacking. We only need a few more attacks on Zapan to uh, make anything happen. Um, and... Oh, no, no, I did get the Poison Rain, right. So, uh, that was very nice to see. <sighs> Didn't get the Poison, but hey. Lasagna is just kind of a kind of a shitty octopus, to be honest. But it's fine. You know what? He's just Lasagna. He's not expired Lasagna. He looks like expired Lasagna, but there's a legally distinct difference between the two. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, more uh, Drain Heart off the TK, which is proving to be the hardest of carries in this particular instance here. Uh, that fear, as well as being able to uh, heal himself, uh, very regularly ended up saving us here. Uh, so Zapan, oh, right, well that ends up working out pretty nice. Uh, he ends up taking out the, uh, uh, the Octopus using one of his uh, big moves that would have been a threat to somebody else, and using it to go finish somebody off. Never change, AI, never change. Um, and... Again, it's funny, because the AI will literally do this in any game ever, and yet, no matter how many times it comes up, like, it, it, for some reason, folks always will insist whatever game it is that they're talking about at that time has the dumbest AI ever, and oh my god, the developers were so lazy. Like, my man, it, it's like every game <laughs> ever created that has this problem. Um, I'm not sure why uh, AI seem to have a hard time being uh, told to be efficient. Like, I... I, I was thinking, like, I, I remember thinking that it was a, a thing for a while in um, in Armored Core, uh, because there are certain situations that they just will seemingly change their weapon types at random um, to uh, seemingly save ammo, but then it turned out that in those particular instances they just had infinite ammo, so there was never a point to. Um, specifically, I'm talking about in uh, Armored Core 6 uh, as a recent example. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't really matter, though. Uh, so Zapan finally ends up getting close, uh, and we have our Canopus all ready to go. Uh, he ended up uh, using his uh, plume earlier to go and buff himself up. We used more leaves on him to get more finishers going. And we have that finisher, in, or we have that uh, critical in the tank, which I think is what happens here. No, it wasn't even, no, it wasn't even necessary. Yeah, so he gets, uh, gets all very aggressively Scottish at us, and it doesn't happen. But... Uh, yeah, he just needs to get down below 30%. I think that was actually 10% in PSP. Uh, so he actually retreats a little bit earlier in this one. But yeah, so that's that. So that was that was the expected soft lock that was expected to completely end this run. And sure enough, here we are. We made it. Okie dokie. And they proceed to take the town. And then this guy decides to show up. He's like, I just soloed several maps, and clearly this is a great idea. It's a good thing I don't have a crippling weakness to petrification. <laughs> Show me the power that crushed Highland. 
Okay. Apparently the power of the crushed highland was a giant boulder. Ah. And then Hamilton gets his ass kicked. So that's about that. So, I will see you all in the next one. Thank you for stopping by, and, um, yeah, I'm uh, probably going to be switching to more of the old-style kind of recording here, uh, recording, you know, directly off the Switch and whatnot. Um, uh, because, yeah, that I'm retiring that Switch Lite. It, it's a neat thing. I just don't like carrying it around as much as a Vita. Anyway, see you all in the next one. Thank you for stopping by. Later.